Several years ago, I was given two photographs as a gift from my friend Steve Cox. Steve Cox is an author who's written several books, definitive books about television and movies, including The Munsters, The Addams Family, The Beverly Hillbillies, Green Acres, uh, Don Knotts. He did a book about Don Knotts' projects and The Wizard of Oz, actually the munchkins of The Wizard of Oz. Steve was able to contact uh, all the surviving munchkins at the time he was writing those books, document every single one of the munchkins that were in the movies. These, these included many adults, and actually some children were munchkins as well in the film. And he documented every single one of them and interviewed the ones that were still alive for his book, The Munchkins of Oz. At some point while the Munchkins were filming in late December of 1938, they visited, four of them at least, visited Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. And the two photographs he gave me were of four of the Munchkin women and some identified men visiting the cemetery. On the other side of where this photograph was taken is where L. Frank Baum is, the wizard himself. I should say the man who invented the Wizard of Oz. So the author of the Wizard of Oz is in Forest Lawn Glendale at one side of the cemetery. The Munchkins visited, coincidentally or not, the other side of the cemetery. I like to think they stopped to see Mr. Baum and say hello. Who's about, well, who's on the other side of the park? See, this section of Forest Lawn, this was the original section, and Forest Lawn consumed it. Forest Lawn itself is called a memorial park. A memorial park means flat stones. That's Forest Lawn up there. All that area is flat stones. A cemetery has upright stones usually. And that's the old section is here that Forest Lawn consumes. So this is the oldest part of the cemetery. And this is Mr. Baum. So the photograph I showed you was taken at an area just off the Court of David, which is the 17-foot exact replica of Michelangelo's David. Uh, Forest Lawn's very big on their exact replica art all around the Memorial Park. Now, the original Michelangelo's David was sculpted between 1501 and 1504. There are over 30 exact replicas of David around the world. This particular one has been destroyed a few times over the years. It was felled by a 1971 earthquake. One of the feet and the head from the 1971 statue that was destroyed is on display in the Forest Lawn Museum. It fell again during the 1994 Northridge earthquake, and again for some reason, well, they say it was known structural damage in March of 2020, but no one was around to see it. It was completely unexpected. So I was luckily there around that time, and the remnants of their Michelangelo's David uh, was still there, just the pedestal and some of the body parts. Then I was also there for the building of the new section and particularly i wanted to see the mystery of life the statue called the mystery of life because that was the whole point of me being there and the whole point of me shooting this for you was to show you the munchkins at the statue we're at forest lawn glendale right now and we just happen to be poking around and uh, this used to be courtyard and they're making it into uh graves as you can see the construction going on so this is what pre-grave looks like they usually lay out the uh the uh a grid underneath underground and that way they all they have to do is is uh dig up the top part and just lower a, ca a casket into it but i came over this way because i thought it would be kind of neat to show you that now there was or is usually a really big statue right there and a couple of them actually right over here and they must have removed them for restoration or something. But I have a great picture of the munchkins, a few of the munchkins from the Wizard of Oz, standing right in front of that mystery of life statue that has been removed. So the Look at David. They bronzed him up. He used to be, um, I don't know, what that, ceramic or something. 
and he fell down a couple times, but they replaced him with a, uh, with a bronze. But the reason we're here is for these pictures. I'm just gonna see in just a moment. The mystery of life. This is, <laughs> wow, this has changed quite a bit in many years. Hubert Eaton was a big fan of fake art. Big fan. Open your galleries of art to the people and you confer on them a greater benefit than mere book education to give them a refinement to which they would otherwise be strangers. Thank you, Dr. Honorary Dr. Eaton. The Walt Disney of the afterlife. So in 1939, a film was released called The Wizard of Oz. I think we all know it. And they brought in, I think it was 120 plus little people from around the world, mostly from Eastern Europe, who uh, came to start as the Munchkins. and. I'm not sure what the filming dates of The Wizard of Oz were. I would have guessed 1938 on the MGM lot, but uh, these pictures are dated 1939. See, at some point, the Munchkins, when they were filming The Wizard of Oz, were here. And I have one more picture. Now the names on these pictures are uh, Josephine Balak, Christy Buresh, Nita Krebs, and Lita or Lida Buresh. And these came from the collection of Nita Krebs. They came via uh, a friend of mine who knew her. And here's another picture of the Munchkins visiting. the Mystery of Life statue here at Forest Lawn. The Munchkin Land scenes were filmed between December 17th and December 30th, 1939. Nita Krebs is probably the best known of the four Munchkins. The two gentlemen that show up in the one photograph don't know who those guys are. Nita Krebs was the tallest of the Lullaby League. The film itself was shot at MGM, which is now sony studios in culver city and during that time the munchkins stayed at the culver city hotel judy garland very famously um probably a bit inebriated on the tonight show and always the uh, great storyteller told the story about the munchkins and their drunken antics on the set of the wizard of oz what about the, the munchkins yeah, how about the, oh. the what <laughs> the, mun the mun munchkins munchkins what? yeah them. Well, how, what the munchkins do? Well, they were, they're they little were dwarfs. Tiny. Yeah. 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 Were they little kids or were they, they little were men? Drunks. They were little drunks. They were little drunks? Because there was a lot of them. Oh, in the hundreds of thousands. And they put them all in one hotel room. Not one room, one hotel in Culver City. Yeah. And they got smashed every night. And they'd pick them up in butterfly nets. <laughs> Uh, I think she said it more as a joke, actually, because I don't believe a lot of the munchkins, they, you know, they'd not been around other little people before, so they met their spouses. They met lifelong friends for the first time on the side of the Wizard of Oz. So, yeah, there was a bit of, you know, carousing, I'm sure, a bit of it anyway, but not to the extent that she had exaggerated. But the Munchkins made about $100 a week. Their representative, or the person who represented them, uh, negotiated their contract, took probably more than half of their earnings. Interesting to note, Toto the dog was paid more than that, $125 a week. But still, here we are with The Wizard of Oz, an amazing film, and I 
don't think any of the little people that worked on the film have any regrets about being part of it. I've been fortunate enough to meet some of the munchkins over the years, thanks to Steve. Uh, Margaret Pellegrini, who was one of the sleepyhead munchkins who were, you know, hatched out of the egg. Uh, Carl Slover, who was a munchkin trumpeter. He actually took my tour one time. Here's a photograph of Carl and myself by the old grave line Hirsch. And also uh, Jerry Marin, who was the Lollipop Guild munchkin who came to visit our shop one time. Oh, and Meinhardt, Meinhardt Robbie, who was the munchkin coroner. My brother and sisters and I actually went on a road trip to meet him one time. The munchkins, the Wizard of Oz, I mean, how great is that? And this is my little bit of munchkin trivia for you. So thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. And until next time. You heard me.